So last year, if the Philadelphia Eagles struggled then, understanding what Jonathan Gannon was trying to accomplish last year and Fletcher Cox calling the D coordinator out last year, what would make you think a first year rookie who's only been an Eagle for about three months is going to think about the assignments that have been handed him? Do you not think also that he's going to question what is being asked? Use your common sense here, folks. When I post something on my Twitter page or I say something, use the context. He's a rookie. It's a new system. It's a new coordinator. You're in the NFL. The stakes are higher. The level is higher. Before we get into Jonathan Gannon, I heard Baird Brooks say something about the Kobe Dean struggling in camp. Hey, it's funny. When I tweeted that out at Dan Cilio show, people went, oh, Cilio thinks these kids suck. No, I don't. That's commonplace for a rookie. They're asking this rookie to come from a system that he played for four years at Georgia and now learn a brand new system and two different positions, inside backer and outside backer, and the addition of Kaiser White and the way that TJ Edwards is playing. The linebacking core is going to be a pretty good group this year. So will he get frontline starting assignments each week? I don't know. He may not start at all this year. He may get limited playing time. That's okay. I know some of you were expecting him to step in and be the next Mike Singletary or Ray Lewis. You, What will make the Eagles even better is if that kid doesn't see the light of day on the field and everyone that's playing in front of him is playing lights out. Because you know what that means? That means your defense got better. Kaiser White and the addition. You know why no one talks about that kid? Because he's actually doing well. I heard Barrett say he's kind of struggling a little bit. And he's not getting the reps that some of the other linebackers are getting. That's common. Folks, when you get an NFL playbook put in your hands, okay, and you get an NFL playbook in your hands, it looks like you're trying to learn French. What do they mean by slant stunt? What do they mean by 46 banjo cover umbrella? What do they mean by shotgun slip coverage? What's that mean? You've got to do extra homework to learn different terminology that you knew under Kirby Smart when you were at Georgia. It's not so much just learning technique, it's learning the verbiage and how they go about talking about a three technique, a one technique, a one gap. Some, some teams call them A gaps. Some teams call them one gaps. So when I say Kobe Dean is struggling, that doesn't necessarily mean he's struggling as a player. That means he's struggling a little bit to pick up the defensive assignments. Hey, let me ask you this about N'Kobe Dean. So last year, if the Philadelphia Eagles struggled then, understanding what Jonathan Gannon was trying to accomplish last year and Fletcher Cox calling the D coordinator out last year, what would make you think a first-year rookie who's only been an Eagle for about three months is going to think about the assignments that have been handed him? Do you not think also that he's going to question what is being asked? Use your common sense here, folks. When I post something on my Twitter page or I say something, use the context. He's a rookie. It's a new system. It's a new coordinator. You're in the NFL. The stakes are higher. The level is higher. Try to use some common sense. You're going from basically college to Google or Apple. When you're talking about job placement here, it's a whole different world. It's a whole different conversation. Assignments are different. They'd be asking him to play more like a Derek Brooks in a 46 look. How do you know they're not asking him to play a Tampa 2 style defense? Tampa 2, you got to be a good cover guy with backs and tight ends. He didn't do that at Georgia. Tampa two linebackers like Ryan Shazier used to do when he was in Pittsburgh before he got injured. And Derek Brooks, those guys are hard to find. 
And he's trying to find his place in the defense. I'm not making excuses for him. I'm just telling you what it is. Okay? That's right, Dank. Micah Parsons, you know what? Let me, let me say this to you. Micah Parsons was something that the Cowboys, he fell into their lap. They wanted the defensive back that the Broncos drafted last year. They wanted that dude. They didn't want Micah Parsons. When that guy went to Denver, he fell in their lap. Making it sound like, oh, Micah Parsons, man. The Cowboys had this guy circled as their top guy. That's not the truth. They wanted a cover corner. They wanted a cover corner. Guys, what I'm telling you here is, when I post something on my Twitter page, because Twitter doesn't really give you emotions of what I'm saying. I'm not saying the kid sucks. I'm saying the kid is struggling a little bit on picking up an NFL defense on what's being asked to him. It's common. Especially when you got a good group in front of you, which it looks like, according to Barrett Brooks, the Eagles linebackers look like they're going to be better than they were a year ago. Relax. Don't rush the kid into something that he's going to fail. Give him an opportunity to succeed here. That's what good freaking coaching is. You want to rush a kid into something and you give a kid and you put a kid into a position to fail? That's not what good coaching is. Good coaching is, are you ready? Are you prepared? Are you mentally prepared? The NFL is a mental game. Okay? Eagle fan goes, I want to go after Will Anderson next year. You go after Will Anderson and you get that guy on your defense, that's a transcendent dude. Absolutely, Philly fan. Eagle fan, you get Will Anderson on that football team next year, I'll tell you something. You pray Jalen plays well. Okay? You pay, Let me say this to you. You pray Jalen Hurts plays well. Because I would take both those first-round draft choices next year, and I'd go get that kid. That kid looks more to me like Lawrence Taylor than what the guy in Dallas does. Just telling you. 17 and a half sacks. I'll make the point to you. That kid that was drafted by the Jaguars and who you'll see tonight in a Hall of Fame game against the Raiders, Will Anderson would have been drafted ahead of him. He was the best defensive player in the country last year. I voted him All-American. I voted him the Buckus Award. Shit, I even gave him some of the Heisman talk. And this year, he's my Heisman candidate for my vote. Oh, and yeah, I vote for the Heisman. So you pray Jalen plays well. I don't want Tyler Van Dyke next year. You know what I want? Will Anderson. You pray that kid plays well. You're hoping Jalen Hurts plays well. That means you can go out and get that guy. That guy's going to change someone's defense next year. I think Saban's got the best defensive football player he has ever coached in college. That says a lot. That says a lot. That guy will change someone's team next year. Change. I agree with you, Slasher. I think he's a top three. Well, guess what? When you want to pay for something that is expensive, you got to give it up. Everyone's always looking. You know, it's funny when I see people saying that, hey, let's trade Jalen Rager. You couldn't get a bag of Skittles for that guy right now. Stop putting Jalen Rager's name into a conversation on trades. Okay? Jalen Rager? You couldn't get a used muffler for that guy. Don't put his name in conversation. There's nobody that's interested in him. Zero. Even with the first round tag that he had a couple years ago. Do you know what people look at Jalen Rager as right now? A colossal flop. You know why? They compare him to Justin Jefferson. 
Not only are you a first-round bust, but you're being compared to Jefferson, the first wide receiver in the history of the league to have 3,000 yards in two years. Almost 200 catches. You'll see that guy, by the way, in week two at the link. Your home opener. <sighs> okay? Heavy at linebacker right now? See what bird's eye view says? Won't happen. Heavy at linebacker. I want to show you something, how people look at that and why people go like this. That's idiotic. Here's why. New York Giants years and years ago had Gary Reasons, Harry Carson, Brad Van Pelt. Three guys that were pro bowlers. And you know what Ray Perkins and Bill Parcells did? Parcells was actually the assistant coach, and so was Belichick, actually. Perkins, who was my coach at the NFL level with the Buccaneers, you know what he decided to do? I can't pass on this kid. This kid from Carolina looks like the shit. I can't believe how great he is. I'm drafting him anyway. They drafted Lawrence Taylor anyway with all those pro bowlers. And by the end of the first practice, guess what? Lawrence Taylor was starting. Lawrence Taylor was the defensive rookie of the year and the defensive player of the year in his rookie season. You don't pass on people like that when you see something that's different. I don't care how many linebackers you have. I don't care who the hell you have on your team. When you see something that's different and that can make a change on your team and change the way you play defense, you get them. You just don't go, well, I got TJ Edwards. Okay. Then he goes to the Washington Commanders and destroys you every year, twice a year. Philly goes like this, how did you get a vote? They called me and asked me. I'm also on the Power 16 with picks the final four for the national championship. I also picked the Outland, Lombardi, Butkus, the Bolitnikov. What else? Bednarik. There's not an award. The Maxwell Awards, which Jacob Media produces and puts the show on for. I'm on the board of voters. That's how I got it. Because they value my opinion. How else would I get it? <laughs> Jalen Rager's bowling in practice. Wow. Practice. I wish I had Allen Iverson. <laughs> I wish we had, I wish I had Allen Iverson on. <laughs> I mean, really. Dude, Reggie White, man, one of my favorite people of all time. Him, him and this guy here, Leroy Salmon. I've never in my entire life ever met two kinder men and two men that destroyed people. This guy's right here, the greatest 43 defensive end in the history of the league. Belichick and Mean Joe Green said it. When they were picking the top 100 players, Leroy Salmon's the greatest 43 end in history of the league. Reggie's the greatest D lineman in the history of the league. You could put Reggie at any position. You know, one thing we have in common, Reggie and I, we were both supplemental guys. I love that fact. Love it. Reggie White, though, man, you could put him anywhere. But that's your greatest 43 defensive end. Completely unblockable. Belichick and both mean Joe Green goes, I never saw him blocked. I never saw him blocked either. Played on the shitty Bucks too. Okay. Crumbly, crumbly, thank you. Hey, did you like the video, man? Thank you very much. Actually, some people at Odyssey put that together for me. Thank you so much. Giants didn't trade up for Lawrence Taylor. I never said they traded up for him. They drafted him. God. Please, don't listen to 2%. Listen to what I'm saying to you. I never said they traded up for him. Oh, I get what you're saying, that you would have to trade up to get Will Anderson because – you're not going to be in a bad position because you're going to be a good – I got it, I got it, I got it, my bad. I got you what you're saying because you're going to have to trade up to get a guy like that. I'm telling you, Dan Parsons is not as good as people think. Dean will be rookie of the year. 
Dean may not get on the field until the midway point of the season, according to Barrett. Barrett was out of practice today, and I was listening to him. Okay? Show us the Sills highlight reel. Now you can go on nine. You can Google it. Doesn't take much. All right, let's get into Jonathan Gannon. Let's get into Jonathan Gannon here. Hey, and by the way, John McMullen said the same thing about Dean. And by the way, I guarantee you, right, Xander? Both John McMullen and myself are not saying that he's playing bad. He's do- Here's what happens when you get into something that you're doing something that's different. You're asking a lot of questions. You're playing a step behind. That's what he's doing right now. It's normal. You play a step behind because you're not sure of what you're doing. You look slow. You're not. Your reaction time is not as fast. Because you know what the first thing you start doing when you're a guy like N'Kobe Dean who's had all that success like he did at Georgia? Xander, everybody, you, you, you know the first thing you do? Man, how come I'm slower here? And all of a sudden, you start losing a little confidence. Why am I looking slower? You're not. You're just not sure of what you're doing. You're not sure of the technique. You're not even sure you're lined up right. And you're asking questions to the guy right before the snap of the ball. All of a sudden, the snap comes. You're hooked. You're slipped. The guy's up on the next level. And you're blocked and you look like shit in that rep. That's what's happening. Doesn't mean he's bad. I'm defending the Kobe Dean here, guys. I hope you don't think I'm talking shit on him because I'm not. I'm defending him. Don't go overboard with what people may be saying about him. Okay? That's all that's going on here. He'll catch up. Now, the coaches have to help him catch up. The coaches have to help him with confidence. That's why they're putting him in on the second team, and he's getting second team reps. A little slower, not quite the talent, and they're bringing him along. This has got nothing to do with his ability. But you're going to start hearing people say, how come he's not starting? What happened? Maybe they're right. That's why he fell in the third. That's completely has nothing to do with the kid's future. It has nothing to do with the future of the kid. I can't believe it. Here I am. I'm defending. I'm defending someone for you. Dean has great instincts. See what Sub said? Dean has great instincts. But you know what? Right now, Sub, he can't use those instincts because he's not sure of his assignment. Every single rookie that comes into the National Football League, goes through this same process. We're going to get Bill Romanowski on. Bill Romanowski won four Super Bowls. Okay? Four. He's a four-time Super Bowl champion. That's the reason I got Bill on today. He's in hour number three at 530. He'll tell you the same thing. You got to do a lot of homework. It's more about chalkboard stuff right now for Dean, understanding what's being asked to him. That's right. Manster, Dean is smart. He'll pick, he'll, Jesus, criminy. People have to give this kid a chance. Okay? Just give him a chance. He'll get there. Okay? He'll get, he'll, he'll get there. I I completely believe that by the end of the year, he'll be a factor on your defense. But it's not going to be at the beginning of the season. I'm not, I would never put N'Kobe Dean into an NFL football game right now until I'm confident he knows what he's doing. Okay? That'll come. And you wouldn't want to put the kid in a losing situation. Put him in winning situations. Okay? That's right, Flex. Flex, put him in situations to succeed. They started doing that with Michael Parsons last year. All of a sudden, they realized what they had. They went, holy shit, we got to start tailoring some of the defense around the kid. 
You know why? You know why that Micah Parsons had so much success last year? Micah Parsons had so much success because after Dan Quinn realized what he had, he started tailoring some of the defense around him. And when you start tailoring some of the defense around him, that means you have less requirements on what you have to do and you get to freelance a little more. Bill, Bill Belichick says this all the time about Lawrence Taylor. He didn't know what the hell he was doing his rookie year, but we just lined him up and wound him up and let him go. Then we started putting guardrails in for him, and he was a savant in understanding defenses. Lawrence Taylor was so smart. Hey, with all of his issues, Taylor knew what the left cornerback was doing and what Carl Banks was doing or what Carson was doing. Or Leonard Marshall. He knew what everybody's position was and what their assignments were. He understood the defense better at times than what even Belichick did. I don't think it's horrible news. I think it's just normal. I think you guys are like over... over-hyping the kid. Look, did you get a steal in the third round? I think so. But I told you this. Pump the brakes on people. Pump the brakes. Relax. Wasn't smart. He was a druggie. I don't have any idea what that means. Okay? I don't have no idea. I never heard any of that stuff when he was at Georgia. I heard he was a quality guy, and I heard he was the leader of that Georgia Bulldog team. And when you play two games the way you played against Alabama and the way you led your football team to a national title. He's got my endorsement as a team leader, and he's a great fit on the Eagle football team. He just needs to be brought along a little more. It's okay. Man. Sales, you're right. It's freaking August 4th, and people just go crazy. Dean's a monster. I agree. He's going to – Jesse, he's going to develop into a beast. Yes. Hey, can I... Oh, Lawrence Taylor was a druggie. Yes. Hey, you know what's funny? I'm going to tell you a story that Buddy Ryan told me years ago. It's about Mike Singletary. Okay? Your Buddy Ryan told me this story. Hell, it may have been when he came down in that picture I posted... On my Twitter page, when he came down and met the Miami Hurricane team, and he took Jerome Brown and myself and Butch Davis and Dave Wanstead and Jimmy out to lunch. And we all went. We had a great time. And we're all talking about getting to the next level. He told us this story. True story. That's Mike Singletary. Mike Singletary's first year in the league out of Baylor. He's doing this. Man. Shit. I don't know if I could play. I just don't know if I could play, man. Buddy Ryan went to him and it goes like this. And he was on his ass. Hey, 50, you suck. Hey, 50, where are you? Hey, 50, what are you doing? He's in his ass. He, uh, Buddy said he rode him more than anybody else on the planet. He rode Mike Singletary, Buddy Ryan. Like you would think this guy hated him the most of any player Buddy Ryan ever coached. Finally, Buddy Ryan is sitting there and Mike Singletary comes over and goes, I can't play for you, man. I can't play for you. I can't play for you. He goes, why do you think I'm on your ass? And Mike goes like this. He goes, because I see greatness in you. And all of a sudden, the light went off. And Mike Singletary went, what? He goes, I see freaking greatness in you. And Mike Singletary was like, and he never, and right there he understood. Went into the film room, studied because he didn't want to let Buddy down. Studied, studied, got better. Turned out to be one of the top three middle linebackers in the history of the sport. That's freaking coaching. Remember what I told you? My coach used to get on my shit all the time, and I didn't know why. 
Jimmy, God dang it, you're late. God dang it, get him on the ground. Get and I'm like, why are you on my ass? And Jimmy looked at me and went, where are you when I'm not? It's like getting punched in the head. The Kobe Dean's going to come along. Trust me when I tell you, there is a process in this. Right. It's about swagger and confidence. And you build that through coaching. Right now, he's going through that. It'll come. It'll come. Can you imagine your buddy, Ryan, and you're screaming at Mike Singletary and Mike Singletary comes to you and says, I can't play for you. Ask Mike Singletary the story. I couldn't believe what I was listening to at lunch with Buddy. He goes, the kid was almost in tears, man. I can't play for you. I just can't. I can't play. Buddy Ryan goes, I see greatness in you. What are you talking about? And right there, Mike Singletary, a light bulb went off. It happens like that. It's like a light bulb going off. Oh. I get it now. That will happen for Nicobe Dean. Trust me when I tell you. That kid's going to play in Philly for a decade. Let it happen. He doesn't have to be all pro this year. He's got to help you lead your team to a Super Bowl. That's what you want. Ryan's right. You don't have to be great right away. Playing in the NFL is a process. Dude, it's the hardest thing I ever did, and I failed at it. I admit it. Sorry. I failed at it. I'm sorry. I could pull my eyes out every day. I could pull my arm off every freaking, every day that I didn't do the things that I needed to do to stay. It wasn't about ability. It's about accountability. It's football season. Get ready. This is how we are here. I I take swings and sometimes I don't. And right now I'm just talking to you. Jeremiah goes, Sills, you had the tools to be great. Jeremiah, you know what? That's so insulting, but true. I can't tell you how many times I do this, Jeremiah, and I do this. Look, this is what you don't want to be if you're Nicobe Dean. Can I show you? You don't want to do this. Look up when you're 50 years old and you look up in your mirror and you go, God damn it. God damn it. God damn it. Damn. That's what you don't want to do. That comes with coaching, though. I'm pulling for the kid. Of all the guys on the Eagle team, the Kobe Dean is my favorite. I want him to be successful. I heard Gary Cobb say he was doing some great things out there today. That's great to hear. But when you hear him, like, running on the second team and He's asking, ask a lot of questions. Ask. You know the biggest mistake? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what. My wife, who's a coach rugby, you know what's funny? This is common behavior for an athlete. My wife's a rugby coach, and she'll go like this. You guys understand what a ruck is and what this is? And everyone will go, nobody will... Put your hand up if anybody doesn't understand. Nobody puts their hand up. I turn to my wife and I go, I guarantee you 90% of that huddle that you were talking to doesn't. Go back the next day and ask them what you said yesterday. She goes, sure enough, they didn't know. She goes, yeah, because you know why? Pride Pride is one of the most devastating thing that you can have in a sport where you've got to be physical and nobody wants to show weakness. Help them. Coach them. All of them don't know what's going on, especially the young guys, especially Jordan Davis, all these guys. Okay? Your guy's okay. I promise you. He's okay. 
Okay, he's okay. He's going to be a guy that's going to succeed. I'm very happy that I could start my show out talking about a guy who's going to be a great player for you. And some people are now looking at it like, man, he's not as fast. It's not true. His confidence is a little shaken. It's okay. This comes down to Jonathan Gannon and the coaching. I'm going to hit on that. Guys, do me a favor. Check out my good friends at Morgan & Morgan, where the fee is free. Means this. If you're hurt or injured on the job, finding an attorney is one of the most important things that you could possibly do for you and your family. For the people is, it's not a slogan. It is absolutely who they are. It's what they do. They've been doing it for 30 years, collecting over $13.5 billion for their clients. That's impact on families. There's no such thing, too, as a fender bender, and they will not be intimidated with their over 800 attorneys in offices in Philly, New York, and in Florida. Morgan & Morgan is the biggest firm in the country and ready to do battle for you. Call them at 800-512-1600. That's 800-512-1600. Look, open 24-7, seven days a week. 800-512-1600. Also, remember this. The consultation is free and the call is free. 800-512-1600. And when you call Morgan & Morgan, do me a favor. Tell them Big Sill sent you. Many times when people are injured at a place of business, they don't realize they may have a case. The fact is injuries should not happen. And most of the time when someone is injured, someone is at fault. Maybe the store manager installed a cheap, slippery floor, or there wasn't proper security. After an injury at a hotel, restaurant, store, or any place of business, it's so important to call us. Time matters, size matters. Morgan & Morgan, for the people. Dot com.